All right, folks, we're under the hood of the 2011 Chevrolet. It's got the big 5.3. It's got a leaky radiator. And uh, it's a 1500, in case you're wondering about that. And uh, the guy says, get after it. So let's get after it. So first thing we're going to do is pop all these little plastic clips out. One at a time. And take this plastic shield off the top here so we can see what we need to get to. This does have an oil cooler on it and transmission cooler hooked to the radiator. So we're going to have to unhook those. It's got the jiffy tight connectors. So we'll pull this little guy off and set her over here. Well, it doesn't really give us much. I couldn't remember if it was going to help us or not. I don't think it's going to hinder us, but I want to get this tube off here. So we've got some room to get the fans out to get the upper radiator hose off. So we'll grab a eight millimeter little prying apparatus and we'll be in good shape. Get that clamp loose. Over on this side there's the uh, little fresh air for the PCV. And then we'll go over this way and get it off the air box. This little guy just pops right out of there. Radiator hose lives right here. Let's see if we can't work that baby down. They're a pretty long winded clip. We need to take up some space. if we can't get this little clip undone that holds the hose on. We get another prying apparatus here. There we go. Got he. So you gotta reach in and push the little donger down. Push down your donger. There's that. Get this little hose out of this clip. There we go. Let's unhook it from the radiator. Now we haven't drained it, but there's not a lot of coolant in this thing still. Watch your finger, these things get you. Oh. Whew, still a little bit in there. Here it's sloshing, we'll keep it pointed up. Let's stick it back here somewhere. I don't have a lock on it. I was gonna unplug the fans here. Oh, it looks like it's missing some of the connector. Thought I could feel it up in here. I can feel you up in there, old son. Oh, there it is. I knew there was more to that connector. Uh oh, we dropped it. The claw! Here we go, see if it still works. Didn't even have to spend a quarter. Actually, I think the claw machines are more than a quarter. There's that. Okay. Now we'll get this one. Well, this one may have a lot I thought uh, the freaking guts out of this one stayed up in the fan, too. Let's see if I can catch them this time. <laughs> see, Andy? <laughs> oh, this camera picks up everything, my guy. Okay. 
That's interesting, both of those plugs popped apart. No problem though, we found all the parts and pieces. Okay, those are back together. Now, let's get our cooler lines out of the way, then we can take our fan assemblies out. You ever get sick of that? Oh, I was just gonna tell the people about you, because I was using this thing, and it reminded me of you. You love the claw games. Oh, I do, I play them what all the time. What did you time. think I was talking about? I have no idea, but I was a little worried. Something from the Matrix? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. I never win the football games, but I, I sure do love to I play I don't know them. why you like the claw games. Because <laughs> I feel like I it's really... It's not like you play any other game in the whole world. Like, oh, there's a claw machine. <laughs> I'd like to just go lose 5 or $10. Maybe I should just run your excavator. Maybe I would be like, this is... This it's was satisfying. My... Let me tell you. I'll put those stuffed animals all over the yard. You better be like, we are winning. <laughs> I think I <laughs> You pay me a dollar every time you clamp it. I, I pay a dollar and I don't get anything. Oh. Well, you can, you can run it. Okay. Did you need me? Or were you just coming out to the asses? Yep. How's this going? Pretty good. How come it's not done yet? Because Andy was here and we were talking for a while. And now you're here and we're talking for a while. <laughs> just send us away. All right. I got to get after it. Okay. I sent him into the office to talk to you so I can get after this. So we gotta get after it, so thanks for visiting. <laughs> We need to get these unhooked from the radiator. That one's wiggly, so that's good, and this one's wiggly. Pull back a little plastic sleeves that are on them there. You'll see what I mean. Get this hose out of our way here. Give that a squeeze. Good, no coolant in that one, or very little anyways. And now we can see our our top uh, Jiffy Tight connector there. Hopefully you can, we get a tool for that. I'm gonna use our Jiffy Tight release tool. Uh, fun fact, a Jiffy Tight, born right here in the People's Republic of New York, right up in Buffalo is where these connectors are made. Well, at least that's where Jiffy Tight has their home. That's where they're from. Whether they're made there or not, I have no idea, but. And then the other one, you can't see it, so I just wanted to show you the one you can see. So I'm gonna reach down here and we're gonna use a Jiffy Tight Release tool. Stick it in there, give it a little turn. And wiggle and Bob's your uncle. Uh, fantastic little tools. Uh, they work great providing the Jiffy Tight connector isn't jammed full of corrosion and stuff. But if they're like these where they're pretty clean or they're oily, these things are way easier than trying to pick out the the little eclipse, you know. We'll pop the plastic off these. I think they're half inch. We'll grab our half inch tool. Yep, it is. So this is a little kit I have. These are made by Mac. There's a Napa part number for the uh, eclipse in case you sent one of them flying. Looks like a 7305030. You get a little bucket full of clips. If you don't have one of these tools, just pick the clip off and then you can get it. We probably should unhook the hose or unhook these from down below before we get too far here. But let's just see if we can't pop this one out. Yeah, let's get them uh, loosened up down here, I guess, first. Just a little plastic uh, retainer down there. I didn't know if you guys could see it, so I did it off camera. Looks like it needs some cooler hoses anyways and tranny cooler lines. There. There's that one. And I'll come down here and get the other one. You probably can't see this one though. Yeah, oil cooler lines looking pretty rough. 
in train lines. We've got him and hawing about the radiator, so I think we'll probably do them a different day, I would guess. As long as it's before the day that they decide to cut loose, it'll be okay. Let's peel the fans out. Couple of them and the magnet tray. And that should be it. Should be just sitting on there. Yes, sir. Now we're gonna open the drain, aka remove the lower hose. See if we can't get this clamp to cooperate with us. Make sure you have a bucket ready. You're probably gonna want four or five buckets because it's gonna go everywhere. I would guess. That ain't coming. Oh yeah, we're not in the bucket at all. So we can at least pretend to be somewhat environmentally responsible. Are we hitting any of them now? I get a few of them. Now what else do we have here? We got another hose. Look at that clamp back. Look at that hose off. And that's it. Let's take the radiator out, we'll get the new one in, and we'll hook things back up. You gotta make sure you have the rubber feet on the bottom of the radiator. Want to make sure they went in the right hole. Put the lower hose up, keep her from PPN. All right, let's uh, get the little rubber insulators in there and finish putting this pig together. Pretty easy job, man. Nice if they kind of left the middle pieces out, wouldn't it? Smush them through there. Stick the metal insert back in there. And then we can, you know, move them wherever we need to. Kind of gives you a little wiggle room, if you will. I was going to buy this radiator OEM. I kind of like OEM radiators better than I do aftermarket because aftermarket 90% of the time don't fit great. All the, I've used everything from Denzos to Spectras to Napas and Advanced Autos and Four Seasons, you name it, they're all junk, typically. But I can do this whole job. Labor. Hey, Jack. hey you're welcome, we'll see you, Gil. Okay. I was saying we can do this whole job installing the aftermarket radiator installed tax you know everything cheaper than i can buy just the radiator from gm so i want to save a few bucks so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna save a few bucks i'm gonna stick this in on the other side Smushes down way more than the factory, but yeah, 
aftermarket versus OEM. So the OEM one's longer, so it's gonna bottom out before that one. All right, you know what I mean? It doesn't really matter that I had it in opposite of the way the OEM was. I mean, the metal sleeve's gonna go hit no matter what, but I'm gonna take and pull the metal sleeve out of the factory one. The other factory one here, this way when we tighten it down, like I say, it'll bottom out. They're probably almost a quarter inch difference in height. So it's some of those little nuances that are like, yeah, we could have slammed that baby down. It probably wouldn't have caused any problems, but. But we gotta sleep at night, you know? So let's see. Let's see if this looks a little better for us. Way nicer. You see that? You heard it hit bottom? Looks beautiful. Just like the OEM, only different. Make sure you put your clamp back where it was if you're reusing these spring clamps and the hoses. They got a little impression where it was. I have no idea if it makes a difference. In my mind it does. I don't want somebody to know that I was there, you know. We were never there, man. I'll take all the little yellow things off. Yellow! There's all them. All right, it has the Jiffy Tights in there. Probably not Jiffy Tight brand, but. And let's see what would be easy to do right now. Anything? Probably nothing. Hook up that one little hose. Where my hose at? This one goes up here. This one goes down here. We'll hook up the little one. Sometimes I get a little too involved in fixing the car and not pay attention to my camera. Oh! Slip this baby right down in here. Hopefully, she'll line up. This is where aftermarket sometimes don't shine real well. Is when it comes to lining stuff up. That one went down on. That one went down and I just clicked that shut. Okay. Well, this one fits like a glove. Good job, Nap Radiator. Or whoever makes your radiators. Modine, that's another brand I've used. No idea who, who Nap uses. I'd have to look. We want to install our lower jiffy tight. Possibly. Push, push, push. Oh, mother of pearl. Let me get something here. Freaking junk aftermarket crap. I don't know if our plastic caps our retainers will fit. Let's try this one up here where we can all see it. So we can see that the struggle is real. Let's get it lined up. Push, push, push. Oh, you frig hole, are you loose in there too? I probably should check to make sure they're tight. Ah, there we go, hallelujah. I don't think they're gonna... They're probably not gonna fit because they only fit the original. No, they're not gonna fit. I'm not gonna waste my time. 
I've ran across that before. Uh, I am going to grab a wrench, so we're going to make dang tootin'. Darn Rudy tootin' that those are tight. I'm going to put the little plastic clip on exactly as it was. Down here. Now these aren't super duper important. They're kind of for some redundancy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of keeps the clip from failing. If it were to fail, I've never seen one of them fail without being fiddled with, if you know what I'm saying. So, let's grab a wrench first before I forget. Oh, good thing we double checked, old son. Not even in the ballpark, are they? Well, that be a lesson to you. And uh, same thing when you get a, a you know a new uh, oil pan, you know you go bolt that sucker on. You better be cracking that drain plug loose and retightening that just to be sure. No better than this. Where are you? Where are you at? There? There's one. Plug both your fans back in. I'm trying to put the lower uh, train line in. It won't go in. But you can see when the little guy over in China put this thing together, he stuck the E-clip in on the inside of this sucker. So what we need to do, our job, is we need to pull this E-clip up and out of that groove and see... There we go. We just had to stick it past so the three little ears aren't sticking in so far. Okay, and just for the record, these are super loose too. So let me screw this back in the bottom of the rad and hook that lower train line back up. The upper one I've already tightened. That one's good. Now these ones, the black clips, at least on the bottom one, fit on. Yep, so these ones, the black clips fit on. I'm gonna give you a free tip. You're gonna wanna write this one down. If you're working on something that has jiffy tights and it has that black retainer, and it was on there when you took it off, but you're trying to put it back on the same connector, but that sucker won't go on, about a 95% chance that your E-clip isn't, it's not seated all the way, your hose isn't in all the way. So usually that's a big clue for you. Like, hey, I can't get the little black retainer on there. Well, guess what, fella? You're probably not clicked in all the way. You gotta go all the way. So let's get the bolts back in these hoses and snug them up. But over on the other side with the oil cooler, we can't get those in just because it's crappy aftermarket. So you have to be able to decipher. Tight, 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 everything's tight. Let's get this back. He's not gonna pee pee on us anymore. Bring that over here. Let's put this little guy right back in there where it belongs. That's clicked back in. That hose is back in. This hose is back in. All we need to do is hook up our hose clamp, put on that thing, and then the piece that we unnecessarily removed will be in good shape. Back in. Back in. That's back in. The PCV is back in. That hose is back in. I'll tighten this up. You think you're so stupid. There that is. Back on. Vortex. Chuck Thunder. Boom.
So now we're going to fill her up. We got some of the Ducks Cool 50 50 pre mixed on sale at Napa. Oh, we should probably get a fun. Not too bad, not too bad. There's one down. Now, before we get lots of comments, which I love the comments, the concerns, the criticisms you leave. Uh, yes, I do own an airlift system. Matter of fact, I have three different brands. The way the bypass systems work on these Chevys is fantastic. And these rarely, if ever, airlock. I've never seen one trap air in them. Um, so I'm not gonna waste time to get it out because I'm gonna have it filled up, warmed up, and out the door before we even got it out and had a vacuum on the system. Do I like the airlift system? I do. Uh, in certain situations and on certain vehicles, especially some that are very troublesome or very prone to getting air or some that I don't want to freak around with the bleeder with, um, yeah, I'll definitely break that sucker out and we'll get right after it. But these here don't usually have an issue. Not to say you can't, usually they don't. Let's fire it up, son. Two gallons. Uh, you can't see it through. See, they put these nice graduations on the side with no freaking clear thing. Gosh, idiots. Let's learn a lesson from Pennzoil in that. You see that? Graduations are nice when you can see through it. Oh, look at that. The people at Chrysler, they don't even screw it up. Oh, look, a little clear thing. Wow, okay, go figure, huh? Hey, Bucky, come here. One more time. Come on. Come here. How are you, kitty? Huh? How are you doing? Go see mommy. There you go. All right, folks, we got the Chevrolet all fixed up, cleaned up, filled up, warmed up, fan cycled. Everything is wonderful. We've got good heat out of the dash. Everything under the hood's all hosed off. And then um, guys come and get it. So that's it. That's how you put a radiator in your Chevrolet. We're going to leave it at that, folks. Uh, radiator in your Chevrolet. A couple little snags along the way. Uh, just those metal sleeves that went in the top of the rubber mounting. You know, not too big a deal. Uh, I'm happy that the fan fit. I'm happy that the radiator fit. Because uh, aftermarket radiators are garbage, 90% of them. Um, and that's it. Oh, and there's the little black covers that went on the cooler lines. But it's going to get new cooler lines anyways. It needs new ones. It should have new ones. New oil cooler lines and training cooler lines because they're both leaking. But when the customer can budget it in there, we'll we'll do them then. So, anyways, we're waiting for that. Don't make me wait any longer for you to go in that comment section. Questions, comments, concerns, the NC, the Facebook, the bell ringing. I'm done saying it. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.